Hello, everybody. My name is Jack Caravanos, and I'm a professor of environmental health at Hunter College. Today, I want to go over some mold identification, assessment, and control uh, basics, a primer on these issues. Let's start with where does mold come from? Well, mold is everywhere. Mold spores, in particular, are on our skin, on our hair, on our clothes, in our furnishings. They're inside and they're outside. They can be easily dispersed and are essentially impossible to get rid of. So if it's everywhere, why is it growing now? Well, you need three things for mold to grow. You need heat, which we have in these homes. You need food, which is the carbon source in wallboard or wood or couches. And of course, now we have moisture. So water is what keeps everything in control. Without water, there would be no mold growth. But it's important to understand that the spores are everywhere. So how do we assess contamination, uh, mold contamination? Well, this can be very complicated. It, the initial assessment is visual. If you see mold growing, it's obvious there's an issue that has to be managed. However, for homes that do not have visible mold growth, it's a complicated set of environmental analyses that involve testing for air, testing dust in the home for mold spores, testing swabs of cultures that you may think may be mold, and sending out for analysis. In addition to that, there's the whole issue is, are these spores alive or dead? So you have many, many tests. They're all specialized, they're expensive, and they take time. So we really prefer to do a visual assessment first before we do any quantitative assessment. And the visual assessment we do is essentially using moisture meters. These devices can measure the percent moisture in wood, sheetrock, carpeting. And if the number is above 12, it means the, there's enough moisture for molds to start growing, to germinate, the spores germinate, and an active mold culture. So using a moisture meter tends to be the most uh, uh, handy and fast way to assess the potential. Now, is there a health hazard? Well, this is complicated. The answer is, of course, yes and no. Uh, there are some individuals that have respiratory conditions that, such as asthma and allergies, whereby mold spores, any mold spores, can exacerbate the condition and make it worse, and maybe even trigger an asthmatic uh, reaction or take one that's bad and make it worse. For the rest of us, it's a question of particles very high numbers of airborne particles in our respiratory system cause problems. We know this from the World Trade Center exposures. So homes that have active mold growth, like what you see here, may, um, may uh, generate very high levels of particles such that we'll be overwhelmed and we'll have some respiratory illness. There is one mold, Stachybotrys chitarum, that is toxic. We call this the toxic mold. It's rather slow growing, and I don't suspect it's coming out just yet. All the other mold species, Penicillium, Aspergillus, Cladosporium, will likely take off first and have a competitive advantage, thereby keeping Stachybotrys probably under control. However, Stachybotrys contamination is serious. So what precautions should people be taking when cleaning up these homes? Well, I believe where there's indoor mold present, an N95 respirator with a plasticized suit that can be easily wiped down so you don't bring contamination home, and gloves is adequate protection. If there's extensive mold contamination, much higher respiratory protection is, is required before you start demolishing these homes. Now, what about chlorine? Chlorine bleach is problematic. First off, you are not supposed to spray chlorine bleach as an aerosol, and many people do this. Uh, chlorine is a respiratory irritant and causes problems in and of itself, maybe more serious than the mold problems. Number two, chlorine and ammonia react to produce a gas called trichloramine and is very irritant to the respiratory system. We all know do not mix chlorine and ammonia. So I don't even like having chlorine in the house for that reason. But the most important is chlorine is 95% water. 
So after you destroy the surface coating of mold, you're re-inoculating the material and you're wetting it again. And that's going to cause a vicious cycle of dying and growing and dying and growing. So once we dry up the material, we do not want to re-wet it. And that's what chlorine bleach does. So the best control is to dry out the material. And for most of these homes, what I recommend is shutting the windows, shutting the doors, buying several, hopefully two, three dehumidifiers, turning them on and removing all the moisture from the air and from the surfaces. This will happen very quickly. In a matter of 24 hours, you can really get down to fairly low levels of moisture in these materials and produce and essentially stops the mold growing in its track. From there, you can proceed to demolish the wall safely, making sure you're wearing the proper respiratory protection and suits. Well, thank you for listening, and if there's any questions, feel free to contact me. Goodbye.